Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and recently I had myself a light bulb moment. Stick around to find out more. Okay, so if you've been following the channel and following my uh, progress that I've been having, or not having as the case may be, pun intended, with the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1 and the cooling issues I've been experiencing with it. Now I've been thinking, I've tried pretty much everything. I've uh, cut it to within an inch of its life. There's not much metal left in the chassis now. I've cut off as much plastic as I can. I've tried numerous different types of cooler, as you can see, dotted around. I've tried water cooling, I've tried stock cooling, I've tried Arctic cooling, you name it. I've tried pretty much everything possible to get this CPU at a reasonable temperature. Now, I was thinking about it, everything I've done or everything I've tested or tried, I've always ended up using this cheapo stock cooling paste, which I guess isn't particularly good. I've had it for years. Whether or not it goes off, I honestly don't know. Um, I've probably had it the best part of six, seven, eight years, and I've gone through almost the whole tube. So I thought to myself, right, what I'll do, I will invest in some decent thermal compound. So I've gone out and got the MX4 thermal compound. Now this one is, I believe, a 20 gram, yep, 20 gram package. You can get smaller ones, but economies of size, I always use it, so I thought I'll get myself a bigger tube of it. So I'm gonna take apart the water cooler, which is currently using this thermal mess, reapply the MX4, and see if it actually does make a real world difference with the temperatures. So stick around to see how it goes. Okay, so this is what we've been dealing with. So at the moment I'm running the Prime 95 uh, stress test. This is the Ryzen 2200G, just in case of those of you who are not aware of what I've been dealing with. Uh, so 2200G running pretty much out of the box stock. I've taken away any overclocks. Literally what I've done is on the motherboard, reset to defaults. Uh, but applied the XMP profile to the memory, which is running at DDR2400, so it's not a massive overclock over the DDR 2133 that it should be, but it's running at its pretty much out of the box configuration. So, what we've been getting is here we've got a package temperature currently at 72 degrees, which is actually dropped degree. Um, I've opened the window actually because it's getting really hot in here. So, 73 degrees is the maximum that we've experienced. The minimum was 38. Now, this is with a uh, Gamax Maelstrom all-in-one cooler, which, yeah, it may not be the best cooler on the market, but it's still a water cooling all-in-one, which is a 120 mil. These temperatures shouldn't be that bad. I attribute a lot of this to the chassis that I'm using, that Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1, which is just the bane of my life. So, anyway, that's told you what's going on. So, if we look here, we've got all the temperatures, etc. Now what I have noticed is the, C, uh, the processor will max up to 3.7 gigahertz. Now, it seems to have been throttled at uh, 3623 is the most it's getting to. So it's throttled back a little bit, the cooling quiet and all that kind of thing is on at the moment. So that will have some effect. I've not gone into full overclock mode to get this thing as hot as possible, but just to see if there is from stock gonna be a difference between the standard heat goo and the Arctic MX4, or any other type of pace for that matter. So that's what we're trying to beat. We're at 72 degrees, that's what it's kind of leveled out at. So I'm gonna go ahead now, change over to paste, redo the test, let it run for about five minutes and see where we get to. So, wish me luck. Okay, so that's the, uh, the MX4 thermal paste installed. Now, as you can probably see by the B-roll that you saw just then, I put it on, put on a little bit too much, so I've cleared it up. I didn't realize it's quite as runny as it was, so ideally if you're gonna be installing that paste, then you probably wanna put your chassis flat, or at least have the CPU flat, so you, it doesn't run all over the place. 
Uh, luckily, I wiped it all up and it's fine. It's non-conductive anyway, so it's all good. Now I squished it out with my finger around the paste, around the uh, CPU head or CPU die or whatever you want to call it, the heat spreader essentially. Um, not the best way of doing it. I would suggest probably follow Arctic instructions and use some kind of spreader um, or do lines or whatever is best for your particular cooler. But in the interest of science, uh, it, hopefully it's going to give us some better temperatures. So I'm going to fire up Prime 95 now and hardware monitor and we'll see what happens and see uh, if we do get any better temperatures. Fingers crossed we do. So let's fire it up. I'm actually, interestingly, already, um, let's turn that around so you can see it. Now, already, just from booting up, now, previously, that was idling at about 38 degrees. It might be slightly out because I didn't start the program up straight away. But already, we've got 29 as the minimum value. Maximum value is still only at 31 degrees. So, from idle... Although that isn't entirely scientific, because I'm not sure when I started the program out previously, whether those things run in the background, etc., etc. Um, but at the moment, we're looking like we've got a probably almost 9 degrees cooler already. So what were we before? 38. 38, 29. Yeah, that's a pretty big gap. Well, let's hopefully it stays, uh, stays that good under stress. So I'm going to run the uh, small FFTs, the maximum heat. Lots of stress on the CPU and lots of heat. And I'm going to leave that running now, probably about 10 minutes, just so it equalizes the pressure, uh, sort of equalizes the temperature in the AI O cooler. Wow, I'm struggling with words. Words is hard at the moment. But anyway, you get the gist. So I'm going to leave this running for about 10 minutes or so. So we'll be back after this interview. <laughs> Okay, so we've done our testing and we've run the benchmark now for well over 10 minutes and I'm pleased to say that the MX4 has done pretty well. It hasn't done as well as I had hoped to have done. Um, I think a lot of my problems result down to that Cooler Master Masterbox 3.1 case which I'll throw out there, I hate it. It looks great, well in my opinion it looks great, but the thermals are absolutely horrendous. I don't know how you other people out there with your sort of 1060s and 1070s and all your high-end systems. I don't know how you're coping with this chassis. I really don't. I'm really struggling with this Ryzen 2200G on its own at the moment. But anyway, that's enough of me ranting about this case. So, using the MX4 instead of the uh, HY510 compound, I've managed to get the CPU now is running at, it's currently 69 degrees and it maxed out at 70 degrees and the idle temperature, or the lowest temperature recorded, was 29 degrees. So we've got a good 8 or 9 degrees cooler on startup or idle. And under load, we've got a 3 or 4 degree difference in temperature, which isn't as good as I hoped. I was hoping for near closer to 10, but still, a little bit of a, a drop in temperature is better than no drop at all. So if you're considering getting some MX4 thermal compound, definitely go ahead and do it. You will get your fingers a little bit mucky unless you use a spreader, like they say in the videos, but uh, hey, it's all part of the fun of doing it. So this has been a uh, little bit of a test between thermal compounds on the uh, Ryzen 2200G in the, I hate this case, Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1, which actually is going to be soon be changing to a new case, which is uh, made by Coolink, or Coolink, not sure how you pronounce it, but Coolink. Uh, if you want to see the video for that, make sure you subscribe, click on the chime icon, and you'll be notified of any videos as they are released. So, um, give us a like if you like the video, give us a dislike if you dislike the video. If your uh, thoughts are a little bit more complicated than a yes or a no, then put them in the comment section below and we'll have a discussion about it. But in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we will catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.